Now, Clarence, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have done what I've done today. You helped me become a professional fighter. I accomplished things in that. I broke records in Madison Square Garden, you know, I've been up in the top 10 in the world. If it wasn't for you to even open up the door for me, then, hey, Clarence, I would have never made it, but you gave me hope. You made my dreams come true. Without your hard work and your sacrifices, I won't be where I am today. You know, all the advice you give me, the laughs, you know, I really enjoy the fun times that we have when we see each other. You've been our voice on this side of boxing to show us that, you know, we can get to that stage. You definitely opened some doors for us that some other people couldn't open. And you gave us this platform for us to be able to do what we do. I never heard Bermuda going to the Olympic Games for boxing. I never heard that. But when I was asked about it, I really didn't believe the person that asked me until they took me to the government recruiting somebody in boxing to go to the Olympic Games. I started to believe it. For Clarence Hill, you know, he was in a different era. For him to fight through everything that he had to fight through just to get to the Olympics and be able to medal like how he did. And then everything he had to go through outside of the ring, those are big battles that he had to go through. Well, mostly through my amateur career in Bermuda, I had nobody to spar with. I was six foot three, I was a heavyweight. I had nobody in my division or my size that I could spar with or I can train with. Just the Sure ability to know that, that I knew how to fight. They, they got, got me in the ring and got me to win the fights because I knew how to fight. To tell you the truth, I started to uh, spar with the, uh, the younger guys that were there in, in, in the gym, smaller guys. You know, the man is six six three. You know, I'm only about five five four. I was really no no real match for him, but. He used to just work out and get in and, you know, just push me around and let me hit him and... You know, and I couldn't do that too much because I would hurt him. You know, because like, at that time we had guys that could have been sparring with him that was more or less in his weight class. You know, maybe a slightly lighter, a light heavyweight, but they was more timid because Clarence probably put more heavier punches on him. So I got more confidence by me sparring for a big guy like Clarence. You know, so when they hit, you know, I could be able to take it and, and keep on going. Funny enough, people won't understand, people won't believe, but they brought in professionals in Bermuda to spy with me to get me ready for the Olympics. I'm an amateur, and they brought in professionals. And to tell you the truth, I'll be honest, and the professionals that they brought in, I sent them back home. You know, they wasn't good enough. <laughs> you know, and here it is. I'm trying to get ready to represent Bermuda 1976 in Montreal County in the Olympics. You know, and, the, and the problems I had with my Department of Youth and Sports, for them to get me ready to represent my country. Can you imagine how I felt? New levels bring new devils. So the pressure of temptation and things of that nature, I'm pretty sure that's what he felt because I feel it when I'm rising. I, I felt good leaving Bermuda knowing that I was going to the Olympic Games, but also dwelling in my mind and my spirit was always, how am I going to do in the boxing ring? Not knowing the opponents that you're going to fight, you know, because you know, I've never been to the Olympics before. And I was scared to the fact is that I never had, you know, I didn't have no decent training. So how was I going to do? You know, I knew my ability, I knew me being a, a cocky young man, I knew how to fight. You know, I'm not going to give up on nobody, I'm not going to run or hide from nobody. And as a boxer, we're very, like, competitive and, you know, 
we want to leave a, a, a mark and a legacy. And what is left, that's not no easy feat. Like, you really have to respect what is done. I've, I've won two belts. You know, I'm the first Bermudian to win two regional titles. I would say that the Olympics is like the pinnacle of, of sports, you know? So for Clarence Hill to get a medal at the Olympics just shows that just because you're from Bermuda, you can, you can do big things on the big stage, you know? Just ability, just my ability to know how to fight. And sometimes it allowed me to really not worry about having smart partners, especially when I was an amateur. My first fight, who? Well, I was so happy to get in the ring. You know, it was like, the round didn't even go the whole distance. I beat the guy, as soon as I got in the ring, I think I hit him and he, I knocked him out. Well, when Clarence came back, it was like, it was sad, you know, to know that he was the only Bermudian to ever win a medal at that time. Whereas when he arrived, he, he didn't have no, no government officials there. No, no youth in sport, no sporting. You know, it was just the Pembroke Youth Center, his mother. And I think that was sad, you know, to know that the first Bermudian to ever win a medal, you know. And like I said, nobody's perfect. I don't care what type of history he had or how people looked at him. I think he deserved that, you know, he deserved that. Hey, Clarence, he was his um, a, a back of town Bermuda name.